A private mission that blasted off from Cape Canaveral early this morning is facing almost certain failure after the critical loss of fuel to the moon lander after it separated from the rocket. About seven hours after the launch, the private company Astrobotic said it was having issues with a solar panel that had been used to power the aircraft. And there's also a propulsion failure, some kind of system failure there that appeared to cause a loss of fuel. So Derek Pitts joins us now. He is the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Derek, thanks very much. So at this point, we've seen statements by this company. What exactly do we know right now? Well, one thing we know for sure is that this is an extremely risky business. You know, it's always difficult to launch any spacecraft at any time, especially if you're sending something out to the moon. It's just really complicated. It's a really complicated business to be in. So what we know at this point is that there seems to be a flaw in the propulsion system such that if there isn't enough propulsion available, it might not be able to land safely on the surface of the moon and might be able to make the trip out there, but it might not be able to land safely on the moon. So so we have to wait and see uh, what it looks like the available fuel uh, is after the leak that has occurred. Uh, you know, and, and Derek, uh, it's been pointed out by the CEO of Astrobiotic that uh, the only successful lunar landings, and there have been some crashes as well, have generally been accomplished by superpowers, right? China, maybe Russia, the U.S. for sure. Uh, so this partnership between the private company Astrobiotic and NASA they were high hopes that it would work out. So where did that dynamic fail? Because we've seen it work in other areas of private public space exploration. Yeah, and there's no question that it will eventually work out in this particular space as well. This is the first time around. I mean, you just think about the fact that this is the first time that Astrobotic has actually created a lander like this. It's a very complicated lander that has lots of different payloads on it. And the rocket itself, the uh, Vulcan Centaur rocket, this was the first launch for Vulcan Centaur. That part went just fine, but this is the first for the Peregrine. So, you know, I think everybody realized that there was a chance that, you know, something might fail. And, uh, you know, here it's manifested itself. But going forward, what will happen is they'll beat out whatever the bugs are and figure out how to make it work properly each and every time. If you look at what SpaceX has done, theirs has always been a process of iteration after iteration with a number of rockets exploding on the path because before they became as successful as they are with, uh, with launchings, with so many launchings happening with them successfully. Derek, remind us what this mission was initially about. What was on board? Well, what was on board the spacecraft were a number of instruments, uh, scientific packages and, uh, and, and equipment for testing the environment and the atmosphere of the moon. NASA had six scientific, uh, five scientific experiments on board, and there were a number of other uh, packages on board, such as a number of, of rovers from Carnegie Mellon University, and there were atmospheric testing packages. And there were also packages from a company called Celestis, of uh, uh, DNA residual, if you will, uh, remnants of uh, people who'd passed away, who you know expressed a desire or their families expressed a desire for this to be their final journey to space. And so what you had were the DNA remains of people that were going to be landed on the surface of the moon. Very, very small packages, but all in all, there were 21 different uh, packages and experiments on board that would, uh, that would be deployed uh, at the moon or in the moon's atmosphere. So, Derek, small um, sidetrack from the science of this to the DNA uh, that you just mentioned. 330 people, the entire uh, cast of Star Trek, uh, JFK's DNA, and apparently hairs from the head of George Washington. Um, what happens uh, to what was going to be a permanent memorial, as they describe it, on the moon uh, to these uh, vestiges of people past? Well, it's a great question. If they don't make it to the moon, I mean, their ultimate destination might be to uh, to travel in space for or to be in orbit around the Earth and the moon for a very, very, very long time. So, you know, I think for an ultimate journey, if you if you don't get to the moon, but you get to travel in space forever, that's not so bad. I don't think it's so bad at all. Seems I fitting. think that's actually a gorgeous way to, to, to put it. It's the truth and it's 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 lovely. And as you were talking about how difficult this is, I'm reminded we're used to seeing shots of the great celebration in sort of mission control when mm -hmm. something goes well. That celebration is because the inverse also happens. Sometimes it doesn't work out.
Yeah, that's entirely true. And uh, you know what we're what we're used to remembering, what we always remember are the successes. We also remember the very hard failures. You know, if lives are lost, that certainly stands out and always should guide you know our our our, our work to try to drive risk in any of this to zero. But if we look back at every space program and every industrialized country all across the planet, every one of them has gone through that iteration period of the first, you know, X number of rockets exploding on the pad, not making it to orbit, getting into orbit and then failing, getting to the location and then failing. I mean, if you look at the Russian space program, which is indeed very, very successful, they've never been able to get a spacecraft to Mars. And they have tried so many times, but they just can't get it together to make that happen. So uh, again, very risky, very, very complicated. I think we all miss how complicated this work is. But when you really get into it and think about it from the nuts and bolts aspect, it's amazing that any of these launches work as well as they do when they do. It is so complicated. It, it, the moon is very, very <laughs> far away. It looks so close sometimes on a, on a clear night. But, but important it is lessons not. will be learned from this. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. Line. Absolutely yep. they will. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, no question about that. Yeah, I feel inspired just talking about it. Uh, Derek Pitts, <laughs> I'm going to be updating my will. No more spreading the ashes in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I want to be on an eternal voyage. Thank you very much. Sounds like a great trip. Thank you. <laughs>